Young Turks now has audio, the TYT audio network, podcasts of some of your favorite shows and new shows, including one with Nina Turner, former Ohio State Senator. She's gonna do We the People with Nina Turner, talking about equality and justice and seeing that through the eyes of regular Americans who are affected by politics and policy. Everybody check it out at tyt.com slash audio. We have got an incredible exclusive for you. This is from Ken Klippenstein of uh, TYT Investigates. And it has to do with how ICE officials are trained and to what end. So apparently the Immigration and Customs Enforcement uh, Agency has contracted a private security firm run by a former top CIA interrogator to train ICE officers in intelligence collection and counterterrorism elicitation, according to federal documents. The documents indicate that the training is to help ICE officers collect information from terrorist suspects. We have uh, more details about the particular contract as well. Uh, the $91,812 no-bid contract was awarded on May 7th, three days after the Department of Homeland Security, which oversees ICE, authorized its controversial new policy of separating undocumented families caught crossing the border. And I think more than any other number, that's the one that you should bear in mind because they are going to attempt to, if they are forced to defend this new policy, try to explain it away as concerns over terrorism. But I think that the timing is suspect at best. Why is it that in particular when you start this new needless policy of separating families, that's when suddenly you're bringing in former CIA officials in interrogation and intelligence collection? That seems a bit odd. And so let's talk about the individual in question. The company is Global Travelers and the founder and president Barry McManus is a veteran of the CIA's clandestine service. He spent over 20 years as an interrogator, 10 years of which he served as the agency's chief polygraph examiner. And we have a little bit of information from him about what this is apparently in in support of, why they're doing this new training. And they say, although the ICE procurement documents characterize the training as utilizing counterterrorist elicitation experts to train officers in intelligence collection, McManus told TYT, it's not that I'm teaching interrogation techniques, I'm just teaching interviews. He said interrogations are accusatory in nature, whereas interviews are informational only. And I have been long on the record that I don't mind informational waterboarding, it's just accusatory waterboarding that I'm against. Yeah. And not saying that they're doing waterboarding, but they are bringing in people who could certainly teach it. Well, and, and who knows what they're gonna do. I mean, who would have ever, I, you know, I remember back when uh, when waterboarding would have been completely beyond uh, you know anything that we would ever imagine. Yeah. And um, you know, and it's not just waterboarding, it's they use threats of, the CIA has been known to use threats of rape, mock, sec, mock mm-hmm. executions. Um, you know, there's been deaths of detainees that were shackled in freezing temperatures. I yeah. do not trust uh, the CIA one bit to be, um, you know, spreading their influence into ICE and, ex- and explaining to them what their techniques are. I don't know. I'm not saying they are going to do this, but I also am saying, how do we know what they're going to do? Anything is possible, obviously, yeah. and nobody was ever held to account. So they feel like if they do uh, do that, what's going to happen? Probably nothing. All right. As Ken explains in the piece, and we'll have the link uh, down below if you later you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, to, so you can read the article for yourself. Uh, but uh, he, McManus says, look, I, I wasn't in favor of the torture that the CIA did. So you, you, you do with that information whatever you think makes sense. But he, he says, look, I've been clear on it. That's not what I'm teaching. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. But when the C, uh, people who worked at the CIA start talking about, uh, no, 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 it's not interrogations, it's interviews. I start to get worried about euphemisms, mm-hmm. right? Uh, remember, it's, it's not torture, it's enhanced interrogations, right? So now I'm not saying McManus did that. I want to be clear about that. So now then I actually, as I'm reading the piece, because um, this is TRT investigates the subjective uh, uh, investigative reporters that actually you guys uh, financed, and thank you for making this story happen. We couldn't have done it without the audience, including Brent, by the way, who gave that campaign before he was a congressional candidate in Kansas. Um, but as I was reading through it, I was thinking, well, I don't know. I mean, th- does ICE normally do this? The, do they uh, normally interrogate people? Or are there a lot of terrorists that come across the border? I don't remember, I and mean, we cover the news every day. I don't remember any terrorists crossing the border in that way. Normally, they actually, most common ways, they get a legal visa, and then they do uh, terrorism here in America. Um, but that's why uh, Ken's story is so good, because he went and asked people. So he asked former ICE official, he asked uh, people who, uh, Heather Pendergrass, for example, chair of the American Immigration Lawyers Association's ICE Liaison Committee. She, was, she deals with ICE all the time. She said that it's a shift to something darker within ICE. So that's a, a quote that got me worried. 
And she said that uh, this isn't something that typically goes on. And I'm quite frankly shocked that this is the direction things are going. And a retired ICE officer, uh, former special agent Robert Uribe uh, Alvarez said that uh, this is uh, investigations are not something that is typically undertaken by enforcement and removal operators. In other words, these guys are uh, supposed to spot people crossing the border and then hand them over. They don't do the investigation. A joint terrorism task force would do one if they thought there was some connection to terrorism yeah. or other organizations would do it if it wasn't related to terrorism. So apparently this is unusual to bring in someone to, to train them on spotting so-called terrorists. The second reason that I'm concerned by it is if all you have is a hammer, all of a sudden everything starts to look like nails. So if you train them like, oh, the terrorists are coming, the terrorists are coming, all of a sudden they're all looking for terrorists. And part of the training is trying to figure out their body language to tell if they're lying. Now look at airports, I think some of that stuff might be useful. Uh, and uh, you know, are they nervous? Are they instead of trying to judge their skin color or ethnicity, judging their actions? I think is a better way to go. But if we all of a sudden we tell the ice guys the terrorists are coming, and watch out if they're sweating too much as they just cross the desert, uh, or <laughs> they're nervous because they're your law enforcement official yeah, talking to them, etc. Yeah. They might be terrorists. Well, okay, now you've opened up a can of worms that that did not exist before. Uh, and and I think that ICE has been far too empowered to begin with, and and in a lot of ways as they're going through the country, not just at the borders, but in the middle of upstate New York, they're snatching people, and and sometimes American citizens because they thought they looked suspicious. In other words, let's keep it real, brown, right? Uh, so for those guys now to be looking for terrorists across the country, when that's not how terrorism has happened historically in America. At, at a bare minimum, it's a total waste of resources. What we're really worried about is that it might be worse than that, an abuse of power. Yeah. Well, and, and thank goodness that uh, TYT has real investigative journalists out there exposing these kind of stories because what we don't have right now is any government oversight over this. Um, one of the ways I know this is, you know, I mentioned earlier, my opponent is the, the chairman of the, the Homeland Security Subcommittee, who is really the person that's supposed to be holding Trump to account on this kind of thing. Um, but he has actually said that he is going to uh, support Donald Trump no matter what crazy things he does. Um, and so, you know, this is. You know, again, it's so important that we flip the house that we get people like like uh, Kevin Yoder out of there and get people in there that will actually provide some government oversight, investigate, uh, have subpoena power, and um, you know protect uh, protect all of us and protect um, you know the victims of, of these kind of situations. Well, I mean, we absolutely need to flip the house to the Democrats, and, and because this is all that's happening right now is they're drawing a line between immigrants and terrorists, and that's not only is that crazy and and it, and it sort of helps them. Criminalize really people of color, like you said. It's not they're not stopping white people at the border and saying, "Oh, you might be a terrorist," even though the number one source of terror in the United States is white men. It's white disenfranchised in some way men, but but that's who it is. And not only does the, uh, the you know right wing media not only ignore this, but but sell the absolute opposite narrative. But now giving ICE this uh, the opportunity to. You know, call random uh, immigrants terrorists on suspicion, and then to, I mean, also they'll probably be torturing them on some level. You know, sleep deprivation or some, you know, th th these things that that um, the CIA has generally deemed not torture or, or not enhance interrogation, just interview tactics. Like, it, it's just this insane constant push, and the only way to stop it is is get Republicans out of Congress, and that's, I mean. You know, best of luck. <laughs> we need it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's designed to dehumanize these people. Um, and you know, first you dehumanize them, then you try to take their rights away. Um, you know, when I get into Congress, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to stop this and be a voice for it. Um, and uh, it's just it's just so important because the people who um, need a voice most in our country and in our society are the people who constantly don't have it. Um, yeah. And it's time that we send people to Washington to to finally do that. So, look, I'm reminded of the Sandra Day O'Connor uh, quote. Uh, so, if you're thinking out there, well, ISIS hasn't started torturing people yet, but ICE hadn't started uh, doing a lot of the raids that they're doing today uh, under previous administrations. And they had not been uh, consulting with the CIA on how to catch terrorists, which is not in their purview uh, before this administration. And Sandra Day O'Connor, when talking about creeping authoritarianism under George Bush, said, I'm worried about these beginnings. 
that lead to those ends. Okay, and so, and it has begun, uh, and we're all worried about where it ends. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.